Father, we thank you for this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you all honor. We give you adoration. Thank you for coming again to us this morning. Thank you because your heart is made known to us. Because your counsel is clear to us. Because there's understanding this morning. Because we can see you clearly as you are. We can see you face to face. In Jesus' name of prayer. Amen. So we've been looking at a discourse on financial freedom. Financial freedom has been a very good conversation so far. Financial freedom, how that as a child of God, God's plan for you is prosperity. Are we together? God's plan for you is what? It's prosperity. God does not want you poor. God does not have the plan of poverty for you. God does not want you sick. He doesn't want you wretched. He doesn't want you suffering. His plan for you concerning uh, life is prosperity. Is that you should have abundance. But we've been looking at the fact that in the kingdom of God, prosperity responds to principles. That there are principles for prosperity in the kingdom. That if you're a child of God and you're living in the kingdom of God, and you're going to express the prosperity of God, that there are principles of the kingdom that you must live by. That as you live by these principles, the prosperity of God will begin to flow to you. And one of such principles that we began to look at is the principle of labor. And I think that was the first principle we began to look at. That if you are lazy, God cannot bless you. God cannot bless a lazy man. The child of God, you have to be hardworking for God to bless you. And don't forget, hardwork is not the same as the spirit of hustling. Hustling is a fearful spirit that wants you to take your focus off God and just sweat just to make things happen out of life. But hard work is a flow of the virtues of God. When you know God, you'll be hard working because you walk from the place of rest. Amen. So when you're hard working, God has a reason to bless you. God can bless you. Praise Jesus forevermore. Then we move again to another principle which I call the principle of giving. That you see in the kingdom, if you are going to be blessed, if you are going to be prosperous, you have to learn to give. You have to be a giver. If you are not a giver, God cannot bless you. So we looked at who to give to. I said you should give to the poor and the needy. And also give to your Christian brothers and sisters. Amen. So we moved again to the principle of honor. Which started about two weeks ago or so. The principle of honor. Amen. The principle of honor. I said I decided to, de- to, to not call it giving also. Are you following me? Because I'm looking at it. Uh, I wanted to see, to see it in a very serious and a, in a deep manner. I said about 90% of the principle in the kingdom for financial freedom is giving. Is what? Is giving. Amen. But I decided to, to, to divide the kinds of giving. So I looked at giving, giving to your brothers and sisters, giving to, to the needy and the poor. But again, the principle of honor is also giving. Are you following me? But it's a higher level of giving because it's not the same as giving to your brothers and sisters and it's not the same as giving to the poor and the needy. Even though I've taught you that when you're giving to your brothers and sisters, when you're giving to the poor and the needy, you have to do it with honor. Are you following me? But this principle of honor is in a class of its own. So under the principle of honor, I began to look at the, 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 the kinds of giving under the principle of honor. And the first one we looked at is offerings. Can you say offerings? How that you should, you, the, one of the ways to honor God is by giving him offerings. By bringing offerings to him. Praise Jesus. That when you honor the Lord with your offering, are you, are you following me? He can release prosperity to you. Are you following me? You see, why have I not, why did I not put offerings and all the other things that I'll still look at? Why did I not put it on that giving? Because it's not just giving, it's honor. Are you following me? Giving the Lord an offering is not just giving him, it's honoring him. Are you following me? For example... If you are to give Dangote one millionaire, are you, are, you, are you actually giving him something? What are you doing? 
You are honoring him. He has, he has more than enough. So you don't really feel that you are giving him something. Are you following me? But it's so funny that most of us, we are giving God something and we feel we are giving, I'm giving. It's honor. Are you following my friends? So offerings, giving the Lord your offerings is one of the principles of honor. It's how you can honor God. And I've told you, we've looked at the scriptures, it's opened the door for prosperity. When you give the Lord your offerings, when you honor with your offerings, the Lord begins to open the door of prosperity to you. Praise Jesus forevermore. Please let's not forget to always put our phones on silence whenever we are approaching church. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. So we will not distract the people of God. Amen. So I began to look at last week that some of us, so, some Christians, many Christians, they look at the fact that, well, I've been in church for many years and I've been giving my offerings to the Lord. Yet I'm not blessed. Yet I'm not prospering. Yet I'm still poor. Yet things are not working. What then could be the problem? They now feel like, oh, it's like all these things that these people are, are teaching, all these preachers that they are lying. They just want to collect our money. It's not true, my friends. So I told you that it is imperative for us to learn how to give an offering to God. There's an how. For example, if you buy a drug, there's a way to use it. They will tell you the prescription. If you don't follow the prescription, it will not work. Is that true? You can now say, oh, the drug did not work. The drug is not working. It's fake. It's fake. But some, but some other people will say that, oh, this drug is original. It's working. What's the difference? They follow the prescription. You didn't follow the prescription. So I'm telling you the truth that giving the, giving the Lord your offerings, honoring the Lord with your offerings, is a principle for prosperity in the kingdom. But you now have to learn how to give the Lord an offering. So last week we began to look at how to give the Lord an offering. There's a way to give the Lord an offering. So the first thing we looked at last week is that what? Your offerings must be thoughtful, planned, and worthwhile. Is that fine? Your offerings must be what? Thoughtful, planned, and worthwhile. I can't stay on this. We taught this extensively last week. So you can go and look for the teaching on our social media platforms, on YouTube, on Telegram, and on Facebook. Look for Glory Center Community Church in Gondo. You'll find the teaching there. So the first way to give an offering to God, the first thing that makes your offering honorable to God and acceptable to God is that it is thoughtful, it is planned, and it is worthwhile. You think about what you want to give to God. You don't just, you don't say, offering time, blessing time, you now put your hand in your pocket. And now check in for the 15 year or the 200. You understand? So, no, no, no. You have to think about it. It has to be thoughtful. It means that God is in your thoughts. You are thinking about God. As the money comes in, as the income flows in, you think, okay, how much am I giving to God from this as an offering? You plan it and it has to be worthwhile. And this was so amazing. Okay, today I want to look at I want to see if I can look at two. I told you there are five things I want to look at in our, on how to give an offering to the Lord. We've looked at one last week, which is that your offerings must be thoughtful, planned, and worthwhile. I want to see if I can look at two today, otherwise we'll just look at one. I will continue next week. Again, if your offerings would actually be honoring to the Lord, and if it would be acceptable to the Lord, Another, way, another thing you must put in your heart when giving an offering to the Lord, how to give an offering to the Lord is that your offerings must cost you something. I mean, your offerings must touch your heart. You must feel it. You must give the Lord your very best. Are you following me? You must do what? You must give the Lord your very best. You must give your very best to the Lord. Your offerings must cost you something. Your offerings must touch your heart. You must feel it. You see, so many Christians give God what they don't need. What does not touch them? Leftovers. They don't feel it. They just give God. See, and that thing can even be one million. And you don't feel it. And you see, you see it in the Bible. <laughs> Someone is opening her mouth. Aha. God will bless you when you be able to give more than one million. She's thinking, ah, ah, can, God, can somebody give God one million and then does not feel it? I'm telling you, yes. 
Are you following me? Prince Jesus, pray for more. Shout hallelujah. If, I, if my memory has not failed me, I think I mentioned here some time ago that there was a man many years ago I heard from Pastor Benny his message who gave the Lord an offering of $40 million. He gave to a church. But eventually he ran bankrupt. He ran bankrupt. Pastor Benny was now saying, was now saying, was asking the Lord, ah, ah, how can you allow this kind of man to run bankrupt? Someone that gave an offering of $40 million to the church. Now how can he run bankrupt? He said, go to him, that man not it from his heart. He didn't touch him. He didn't feel it. He didn't, start from his he didn't feel it. He didn't touch him. So you know if someone can give God $40 million, you know that $1 million is nothing. Aha. Are you following my friends? So your offerings must cost you something. See, don't, don't miss this point. You will appreciate where I'm going. I'm not talking about the, the amount. You know, this teaching, if you look at it clearly, when I'm talking about giving, move the honor, the offerings and all of that, I've been clarifying to you that it's not really in the amount you are giving. Are you following me? It's the heart. But if the heart is right, you, that's why the first thing I said is it has to be thoughtful, planned and worthwhile. You have to listen to that message so you understand what I'm talking about. Are you following me? So, your offerings must do what cost you something. <laughs> it must cost you. You have to feel it that I gave the Lord something. It has to touch your heart. You have to give your very best to the Lord. You see, some Christians give God something they don't need. You can't give God something you don't need. You can't give some, God something you, you don't feel. Are you following me? Praise God. How do you feel your husband? Huh? I know you're not married. So your husband came home. I know he's a, you know he's a billionaire. Are you following me? You know he has a lot of money. You, do you know this guy's what? The guy now came home with maybe an iPhone 5, iPhone 5S. Now say, my love, see the phone I bought for you. It cost me a lot to get this phone for you. As in, I really love you and I, this phone is, I've, I've spent a lot to get this phone for you. And you know that nothing has happened to his You know that he, the guy has money, you are sure. In fact, you are the one that received this alert. You can take it. You know there's money there. You know, you know it's not as if the money is company's money. You know it's his personal money. Do you really think that that offering, that phone, do you think it has, what it has given, do you think it has cost him anything? It doesn't cost him anything, right? You'll be disgusted. You'll be very disgusted, right? Awesome. But that same husband is not a billionaire. Are you following me? Is any 100K per month? Out of that 100K, he saves to pay your house rent 400K per month, per year. Right? He sends the children, you people send the children to school, you feed. Then the guy suddenly comes home one day. Maybe it's your birthday or it's not even your birthday. He comes home one day with an iPhone 14. <laughs> with an iPhone 14. And he says, my love, I got you this phone. See the phone I got for you. You know, you'd be shocked. Uh, how did you get it? The guy be like, there's a savings I've been doing at work. There's a group that we used to do at work. And I planned that. I've been planning since I've been doing that savings. I've been doing it for like two years now. I planned that this year, I used to get you an iPhone 14. So this phone, this iPhone 14 you are seeing, is from my savings of two years. How do you feel to that kind of husband? You feel forever indebted to him. That savings of two years you need to buy a phone for me. Because you want to show me that you love me. You feel like sacrificing your life for him. <clears throat> it has cost him a lot. He feels it. And you found out that in those two years, this guy has not bought new clothes for himself. 
He has not bought new shoes for himself. But he just wants you to go have that phone. It has cost him a lot, right? He feels it. He touches heart. How many of us are giving God that kind of offering before? <laughs> See your life. How many of us have given God that kind of offering before? How many of us have been God? I'm serious. No, I'm, you are not, he's not boasting. If you have done it, raise your hand. Me and my wife have been God that kind of offering before. That touched us. That we felt. Are you following me? Friends, are you with me? Friends, your offering has to cost you something. Are you with me, my friends? Your offering has to what? It has to cost you something. It has to, you must feel it. You see, that's what it means to honor God. How many of you can enter your savings and you bring on the money and you are giving God as an offering? <laughs> you enter your savings. <laughs> now, all these years you have, you have, you have, you have been working, like Tinu now, <laughs> our fashion designer, she has been, the girl has money, you don't look at her that she's a student. Too. The girl has been working, she has been saving, 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 saving. If she has not saved 5 million naira. And I say, God, I want to honor you. She just gets church account and transfers the whole five million. She empties her account into church account. <laughs> How many of you can empty your account? But you should be able to do it. I'm telling you the truth. Are you following me? But of course, you don't even have to empty your account before your offering touches you. Are you following me? But I'm saying you even get to the point where you can empty your account. For the cause of God. Friends, are we together? You see, when your offering touches you, when your offering costs you something, when your offering is planned, when, when you feel your offering, when it touches your heart, when you give your very best to the Lord, are you following my friends? You are, you, are, you are telling God that God, you are first. I honor you so much. That's why I've decided to put these givings under the principle of honor. And I'm showing you how to give the Lord an offering. Don't give the Lord an offering that does not touch you. Even when we say offering time, blessing time. I'm telling you, you must have planned your offering. It's thoughtful. Are you following me? It's planned, it's thoughtful, and it's worthwhile. Are you following me? In planning your offering, in thinking about the offering you want to give God, make sure you are giving something that, that will touch you, something that, that costs you. You are giving God your very best. You are giving God what you feel. You see, if you, come, if you don't feel your offering, God does not feel it. Are you following me? You have to feel that offering, you have to feel it. Ah. It has to be like they've carried your whole world away. God has to feel the feelings in your offering. He has to feel your feelings. He has to feel that you are giving him something. Your offering has to cost you. You have to give God your very best. Are you following my friends? You see, the reason why many Christians feel, oh, but I'll be giving God offerings and all of that, they say I'll be blessed, but I'm not blessed. This is one of the reasons. Their offerings don't cost them anything. It's leftovers. They don't feel it. You understand what I'm talking about as, as we look at the scriptures? They don't feel their offerings. They don't feel it. See, when you give God an offering that you don't feel, so you, when you give God something that is not your best, He doesn't accept it because you've not honored Him. You've not what? You've not honored it. Now, you will appreciate what I'm saying when we begin to look at scripture. Because some of you are already thinking in terms of big money. That's what I'm talking about. But all of us, in the, in the money that flows to your hand, are you following me? You know what you can give God from it. That you know this is, this is my best. This is, I'm giving God the best out of this thing. Don't forget, I'm, I've been telling you that you give God out of what you have. You can't give God what you don't have. You give God from your inflow. But when you are giving God, each time you are giving God, 
Are you giving God the best? Oh yeah, just let me and give God something. God is not a Nigerian police that just gives something. Are you following me? Or God take, or God make and find something for you. Some of us, the way we give God our offering is, is like we are just finding something for God. Then one confirm. Are you following me? Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. You know the way you just find something for police? Huh? You know that way you just find something for them. Or the way you find something for security men. Do you understand? Or a boy that you send on errand that he did well and you are pleased with him. The way you just say, then buy one con. You understand that? Then buy one con. Let me find something for you. Let me look for something. Do you understand that language? Some of us that way we give God our offerings. As if we are just, we are just finding something for God. As if God is some God that needs something. You see, each time, and I taught you that each time there's an inflow to you, each time money comes to your hand, there's a portion of it that belongs to God. You have to appreciate that. Are you following me? Of course, we'll still get to the principle of tithing. It's part of the principle of honor. But offerings too. There's a portion that belongs to God. It's not all the money that flows to you that you, have to, that you consume. Are you following me? So when you are... When you are, when you are when an inflow comes in and you want to remove an offering for God after removing your tithe, you have to check. You yourself, you will know that what I'm giving God is it the best I can give him from this money. You know. No, you know. When you're giving God something from a particular money that, just, that came in, when it is not the best, you know. You know now, we are not, ah, ah. you know. For example, one million hits my, hits my accounts now. Are you following me? After I give him my tithe, let's say I pay 10%, I give God 100,000 naira. And I say I want to give an offering. I want to give God an offering. And I'll give God 10K offering or 5K offering. Is that the best I can give God? Let's say the truth. After I give him 100K tithe, I still have 100,000 left, right? And I want to give God an offering. Tell me the truth. You know, some, you know, some of you give God an offering of 1,000. From that 900,000. You know you give an, you know, you know, no, be sincere. Some of you give an offering of 1,000 naira. And you feel you have, you have given God something. Because after all, I've paid my tithe of 100K. Some of you don't even pay tithe. <laughs> I pity your life. After all, I've paid my tithe of 100K. So offering time, let me send, you just find it. You know, you know, you know like a big man. 1K. You know, let everybody see. Because it's the, it's the highest, highest, highest denomination in Nigeria. People now feel you have given something. You now feel you have given something. But you know you are lying. Wait, out of 900,000 era, 1K offering, is this, is it, do you feel it? Tell me the truth. You know. But tell you the truth, many Christians will do this. They do it. We do it. We just find 1K. We just find 1K for God. God, you say, oh, this one, oh, this one. Oh, lamb. We tell God to hold us. You will not share the 1K. You move, go around, go in case. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you don't broke. God, you said, Oh, this one. I know that you broke. Hold on. Hold on. That's not your best. Are you following me? It's not your best. Praise Jesus forevermore. You don't feel it. It doesn't cost you anything. To so give God an offering of 1K out of 900,000 that does not cost you anything. What, tell me, what does it cost you? It doesn't cost you anything. Except you want to lie to yourself. Ah, ah, 1K. You know, when 900,000 are hit your account, I mean, 1 million, you pay tight 100K. That's why like you remember that you want to buy one Boone Street. 300K. <laughs> you want to buy Boone Street, 300K. <laughs> then there's one shoe that you saw. See them, they know themselves. <laughs> they're already judging themselves. <laughs> you know, also another shoe. There's one shoe you saw, 100K. You went to pick it. You spend 400k on yourself. And there's one Gucci glasses you saw, 50k. And you still feel, ah, uh, this for my body. You don't, you don't feel you have wasted money. You don't feel, you don't, you feel you are fine, you feel you are alright. You still have like 650k or like 450k or 550k. You still feel good. You don't feel you have spent anything. Uh. If, if, if someone tells you, that, how can you waste money on board? You not know, waste money. It's my air, I like it, I... I'm fine with it. But if they mistakenly tell you, I don't want to give. Ah, maybe Yemi don't tell us to know that. Ah, 
Oh, she's so offering. Oh, she's fun on offering. Oh, she's fun on five point eight k. I said, five point eight k. How can I give? How can I give offering of five point eight k? Well, to buy her of three hundred k is okay. So if, if she now want to feel like feel like a good person, uh, so that you mean no fish, she's a bad girl. You just say, okay, I will, I will give use my transfer five k. See, see, church accounting, see. <laughs> So that she can, she can, she can, she can satisfy her conscience. But really, that five k offering will she feel it? She wouldn't. It has cost her nothing. Now, you know, one million is what I've used to to analyze these things. You can relate it to other amount of money, to ten k, to five k. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Your offering has to cost you. I'm telling you the truth. If your offering does not cost, if you don't feel your offering, God does not accept it. Because you know what you are telling God. If your offering doesn't cost, if you just give God something, it's just they are saying, God, oh lamb. You said, oh this one, you use an old body. I'm telling you, that's what you are saying to God. You don't honor him. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? You don't honor him. It's like somewhere here now, you have three cars, you have a Benz. You have a limo and you have a Ferrari. Are you following me? Packed in your compound. You now said, Pastor, I want to honor you. You now went to buy a jackpot. <laughs> a pastor, I want to honor you. I bought this Ijapa motor for you. Ah. I'm trying not to mention some cars so that you don't feel bad. I'm trying not to mention like Corolla. You cannot pack Benz in your compound pens. Park Ferrari, Park Lincoln. Now say you want to honor me with a Corolla, Nigerian use Corolla that they've passed from like four users. <laughs> Nigerian use. You said, you said Pastor, I'm, I'm bringing this offering to you. You have really labored over my life. I'm bringing you this Corolla 20, 20, 20, 20 2001 Corolla or 1998. <laughs> 1998 Corolla. Pastor Konjeko, Konjeko Rara. It does not. It does not eat for it. How do you know? He say because the person that is using it now is the friend of my friend that first used, that used it. That also bought it from the friend of a friend. So I know like five people who have used this car, and the first person used it for like four years, and now we use it for like. And that first person I even used it, they bought it as UK used. That's the conjecu. All of them want to pass on me a fair amount of my jeco for me. Jeco jeco, rabbits for me, jeco jeco. I repo a pony motto manje. You know, if you bring that kind of car to me, you know you're not honoring me. No, are you honoring me? In your company, you pack Benz, the latest editions. You pack Limo, you pack Ferrari. I think you want to honor Pastor with 1998 Corolla, Joe Jeco. Used by four Nigerians, wicked people <laughs> on the Nigerian road. <laughs> you are not honoring me. And me, I won't collect it from you. I will disgrace you. No, me, I'll, uh, in your front, I'll, uh, me, if you know me now, me. God forbid. <laughs> I will embarrass you with that, that stupid gift. No, if it's you, tell me if it's you that want to bring that kind of thing to. I know the person's what. You know the person has money. I know, I know what the person packed in his compound. Do you know tell me the truth? How will you feel? You what? Will you collect it? You hear me? Will you collect it? No matter how much you need a car, will you collect it? But we give God. You know we give, we give God that kind of offering. That's the way we give God offerings majorly. We are now wondering why we have been giving offerings and it's not like God is not blessing us. It's because he didn't accept the offering. You understand? He's, he sent you back. In fact, oh, Jacob, don't do it. As the angel saw you bring in it, God saw it from far. He said, don't make it not rich here, make it not rich here. Send them back. <laughs> Send them, big father, dark father, no let them rich here. What are you bringing? He didn't get, he didn't get to God. He didn't accept it. Because the offering didn't cost you anything. 
Are you following my friends? Look at the book of 2 Samuel so you begin to understand what I'm talking about. 2 Samuel, let's start from verse 18. So this story, if you read from verse 1, but let's read from verse 18, is after David had counted the children of Israel and God was angry with them. Are you following me? God was angry with them. Things started happening to them. Then the prophet God came to David so that David will offer an offering to the Lord so that the Lord will take away the evil and all of that. So let us see how David offered an offering to the Lord in this passage. So let's start from verse 18. Second Samuel chapter 24 from verse 18. Second Samuel 24 from verse 18. Glory to Jesus. And God came that day to David and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Arauna the Jebusite. And David, according to the saying of God, went up as the Lord commanded. And Arauna looked and saw the king and his servants coming on toward him. Now, don't forget, who was David? A king, right? He was the king of Israel. And around now went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And around now said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy. Can you say to buy? I can't hear you say to buy. Say to buy. To buy the threshing floor of thee. To build an altar unto the lord that the plague may be stayed from the people. Now, look at the art of David. He was the king, right? They say, Oba Balori Umbubu. Is that not true? That's what they used to say, that he, the king owns everything. And you soon find out in this scripture from around us response. So the king, the prophet, God came to him with the word of the Lord that go and buy, go, he didn't even say buy. He said, go and erect an altar on the threshing floor of around her and offer sacrifices to the Lord. Now, David as a king, I'm trying to, sh- you, you need to, now, David's response eventually, you might see it as normal. If you don't appreciate, if I don't tell you what I'm, t- what I'm telling you now. You might think it's normal for people to behave like that. David was the king. And the sacrifice he wanted to make was not for himself. It was for the whole nation. Are you following me? Because a plague had broken out upon the people. So the king was to go and sacrifice because he was also a priest, a prophet. Are you following me? To go and sacrifice for the people. Are you following me now, my friends? Praise Jesus. And the the Lord told him the particular land he should use. He said the threshing floor of around her. Are you following me? So normally, the normal behavior is to when you get to around her, tell him, oh, see how plague has broken out upon the people. We need your land to sacrifice to the Lord. He was supposed to be free of charge. Is that not true? No. If the king used the land to erect an altar and sacrifice to the Lord free of charge, would he have wronged around her? You will find out that he wouldn't have. Because even around now, offered it for free. You will see it there. The normal thing was to use it for free. Because it was for the good of the entire nation. But David used, you need to see the, I'm, try, I'm telling you that your sacrifice has to cost you. And that is the act of David here. Yeah. David said, I've come to buy. This, this, this to buy, that I've come to buy the piece of land that I used to sacrifice for the whole nation, is not normal. It's from a act that knows that my sacrifice to God, my offering to God has to cost me something. It has to be the very best. I have to feel it. Are you following, are you following my friends? It's from a heart that honors the Lord who is the king of kings. So let's keep reading. To be not on the Lord that the plague may be stopped. Uh-huh. Please look at it too. And Aaron has said unto David, Let my Lord the king take and offer what seemed good unto him. Let him take and offer what seemed good unto him. Ye be, ox, ye be oxen for burnt offering 
Aaron was even giving him all that he needed for the burnt offering. He said, let, it, let him be pleased to take, take it. It's for burnt offering, it's for the people now. He said, let him be pleased to take anything he wants. Let's keep reading. Oxen for burnt offering and threshing instruments and other instruments of the oxen for wood. It's like this Aaron was a very rich man. Are you following that? Like he was a well-to-do man. So he said, let, he can have it for the sacrifice. Look at the next statement. All these things did Aaron as a king, because David was a king, give unto the king. Can you say give? Can you say give? What's the meaning of give? Free of charge, right? That this land you've come to buy, you can have it for free. And beyond the land, you can have oxen, you can have threshing instruments, everything you need for the sacrifice, you can have it for free. Are you following me now, my friends? And Aaron said unto the king, don't rush. The Lord thy God has set thee. Are you following me? I'm giving you all of these things for free. Go and use, go and use to sacrifice to the Lord. And may the Lord your God accept thee. May he accept you, accept your sacrifice. Are you following me? Do you know that some of you, <laughs> even in giving an offering to the Lord, you almost prefer to keep your own money and take somebody money, else's money to give an offering to God? Do you understand? Know you know, some people find it easy to dash, to dash other people's things out. <laughs> you know, they ah, sheti ye, oh, <laughs> tinu, sheti ye, bam, ufwe, ufwe. But then you find out that, you find out that shit. That shit doesn't belong to the person that dashed it. <laughs> Are you following my friends? No, you don't know people like that. Ah, Ezekiel, do you like this shoe? Is it okay telling Ezekiel, do you like this shoe? Ah, take him now, take him, take him, take him. And the shoe does not belong to him. <laughs> are you the people who dash people's things out? They are very fast to do it. Because it's not, it does not cost them anything. They can dash people's aeroplane out. But their own pure water, they can't give it. Are you following me? Very bad people. Are you following me? I'm serious. There are people like that too. They don't dash some, some, somebody's thing. They'll dash it. You to say thank you. By the time the owner comes and collect the shirt from you, ah, where my shirt? Ah, but if you oh, oh, but oh, he say he say he like him. Oh, if you shirt, the bag bow to you. And I say, ah, you me shirt, you move where? And Tony, no, 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 the bag bow bow. Are you following my friends? Praise Jesus. So some people in giving gifts, in giving offerings, they they prefer to give other people's things. They don't want to touch their own. Praise God forevermore. Shout hallelujah. They don't want their gift to cause them. They don't want to feel. They don't want to feel. They don't want to have any feelings. Because you see, to them, giving is like losing. Like when I give, it's like I've lost. Are you following me? So some people, when they're even giving an offering to the Lord, they feel like they're losing. Like, ah. When some, when some people give an offering of 5K to God, they'll be like, ah, I've lost 5K. Are you following me? Some people feel like they've lost. So, they would rather... <laughs> you know some people can, can have money to give. But because the feeling in their heart when they give to God, when they give an offering or give, give something, is the feeling of loss, that they've lost. They would rather beg someone for money. Oh, they're for me, two k man. <laughs> Are you not only begging money for offering? No money to give offering. No, the person does not have. Because the person does not want to lose his own money. Guys, do you understand? Do you get, like, ah, there's, there's a project we are doing in church, oh, they say we should give. You have money, oh, but when you give it, you feel like you have lost. Ah, you know, I'll be like, ah, Edwin, I beg, if you give me 5K there, <laughs> I need that more gently. It's a, it's, it's a matter of life, and it's, it's emergency. I didn't say, no, Allah, now you are my guy now. Edwin, send the 5K to you, now send the 5K to the account as an offering to God. Not because you don't have. But well, because when you give your own, it's like you have lost. So you want, you want that loss to be on someone else's account. <laughs> you understand? Because giving to you is losing. And, and because of that mindset, you love yourself so much that you don't want to incur losses. So you are protecting your money, protecting your resources. You now want that loss to be transferred to someone else. So you beg to give an offering. You beg to give a gift 
so that you can protect your own. I'm going somewhere. Now, Aaron has said, you can have all the things for free and use it to sacrifice to the Lord. And it's from my heart that I'm giving you because you are a king. Are you following my friends? He now says, and may the Lord your God accept you. Go to the next verse. And the king said unto Aaron, nah, nay, no, can you say no? Oh, the last thing Aaron has said, may the Lord your God accept you. He said, no, the Lord my God cannot accept me. He will not accept me. Are you following me? All these things you are talking about, that I should take it for free and sacrifice to God, that you are now praying, that may the Lord, has, my, may the Lord my God accept me. He said, no, he not go accept me. He can't, you and you will find out why. He can't accept me. If I receive these things from your hand and do just as you said, eh? offer the sacrifice to the Lord my God, the Lord my God will not accept me. Uh huh. But I will surely buy it of thee at a price. We are going to come back here shortly. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which what? Don't cost me nothing. Oh, so David bought the treasure floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Hold on. Neither will I what? Offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which what? Which don't cost me nothing. I will not give my God an offering that does not cost me anything. Are you following me? So you see, the same thing around now was offering to him for free. To offer an offering to the Lord. Are you following me? David said, if I take it like that, for free, God will not accept it. Because it has not cost me anything. He said, for it to be acceptable, it has to cost me something. Because costing me something shows that I honor God. (laughs) It costing me something shows that what? God is first place in my heart. God is priority in my heart. You need to appreciate this thing. Now, all the things around now offered to him for free was still what he used for the sacrifice. Is that true? But at what a price? Can you say at a price? And I need to see the dynamics. The same thing. The same land. The same everything. But David said, if I offer it, if I accept it free and use everything in that way, he said, no, my God will not accept me. Are you following? He said, for my God to accept me, even this same offerings, this same thing, must cost me something. So you need to appreciate that. It's not just about what you are giving, but what does what you are giving cost you? Do you appreciate it now? Because these same things, David could have given it without a price. Without a cost. And he says, no. My God did not accept me. He said, my offering to the Lord must come at what? A cost. Are you following me? I will not offer. Neither will I offer but of the Lord my God of that which does cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. You don't, you don't want to know how much this is. Massive money. What he bought was not... The, the money he gave, he paid was more, is more than what he bought. Though. Far more than what he bought. Are you following me? See, David is a man after God's heart. For him to say, I'm not going to offer what does not cost me anything. This money was big something. It, it's something from David's heart. Are you following me? This 50 shekels of silver was, was a real measure of money. That David removed from his personal account. Are you following me? Praise God. Do you know that the king's account is, is, from, is, from, is, is from the state's account? Are you following me? The account of David is not the account of, of the nation. This 50 second check of say is from, from David's personal account. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friend? It's from David's where? It's not from the state's account, though. From his personal account. And David is saying this money I'm paying is coming at a cost. Are you following me? That means after withdrawing this money from his account, are you following me? David felt it. Friends, are you with me? Are you with me? Praise Jesus forevermore. 
Shout hallelujah. Amen. So he says, it's not about, it's not just about what I'm giving. It's about the fact that what I'm giving, what does it cost me? Are you following me? And the king said unto Aaron and Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. At what? A price. Friends, can I ask you a question? What is the price of your offerings to God? At what price does it come? At what price does it come? Can your offering come at the price of that money you have saved up to buy a car? <laughs> Friends, are you with me? Are you with me? You have been saving up some money to buy a car. You saved up 11 million era. Can your offering to God come at that price? <laughs> Can you offer God an offering that has cost you the opportunity of getting a car? Are you following me? Can you give God an offering that has come at the price? Your, your, the phone you are using is already malfunctioning. It's not functioning well again. And you're already saving up some money to buy a new phone. You save up 300k. You want to buy an iPhone 12. Maybe UK used. Are you following me? And you saw a need in God's house. Are you following me? And you say, I'm going to give an offering to this need. And the price of this offering will be that I won't, I won't get a phone again for now. Are you following my friends? At what price does the offering come? You're offering to God. At what price? What's the price? I'm not saying how much. Oh. I'm saying what is the price? What? How do you feel it? Is it your very best? Friends, can you see the reason why many people, why many Christians have given offerings for years and they are still poor? Because many offerings don't come at a price. Doesn't come at a the price. They don't come at a price. The same money they'll give their children to buy biscuits is what they will give as offering in church. Some of you, the money you use to load credit in a, in a week is more than the offering you give God in a month. The money you use to do data in a week is more than the offering you give God in a month. It's more. The money you used to make care, you used to do, you used to design yourself is more than. It doesn't come at the price. I will surely buy it of the at a price. Friends, what is the price of your offering? What is the price of your offering to God? What does it cost you? Can you feel it? Can you can you feel it? Can you feel it? I will not offer. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. Some of us offer God to us what costs us nothing. It doesn't cost us. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you means you don't feel it. It doesn't. It's not, it's not a money that, yeah, that you feel. Could, could touch. It doesn't affect your economy. Oh, feel it. It's the money you are not using. Oh, no. It's not. It's not, it's not really. It doesn't affect you. Guys, you can't give God that kind of offering. Telling you the truth. He doesn't accept it. He's not a beggar. You know, we are, I read a place yesterday. I can't remember the place. God was, I think, Malachi. I think chapter 1 or chapter 2. Talking about how the people brought him an offering, blah, 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 in a wrong manner. He was talking about the fact that he is a king. You know, you know we are bringing an offering to a king. They brought him something carelessly. Anyhow, that doesn't cost you at no price. Friends, if you are going to be blessed, you have to not go to your offering. And one of the ways to not go to offering is that what? Your offering must come at a price. Friends, what is the price of your offering? I'm not asking if you are giving to million naira. I'm not asking if you are giving 100,000. I'm not asking if you are giving 50 naira. I'm saying that that one, that one you are giving, even if, even if it's 100 naira, what is the price? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm not talking about the amount though. I'm saying that part, even that amount. Are you following me? That 500 naira that you are giving, at what price? Has it come at a price? 
has it come at a cost? Guys, do you understand me? I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about the largeness or the smallness of the money. Do you understand? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you that what is the price of your offering? Can you feel it? When you give God an offering, does it cost you? Do you feel it? Is there a, do you feel? Do you feel it? Does it touch you? Does it touch your heart? This is the kind of offering that God responds to. There must be a price for your offering. Your offering has to cost you something. I follow my friends. You must give God your very best. You must give your very best. You must give what? Your very best to the Lord. My very best, Lord, I give. My very best, Lord, I give. My very best, Lord, I give to you. With all my heart, my very best, Lord, I give. I will not offer anything that will not cost me anything. My very best, Lord, I give. Friends, you give God your, be- your very best. Even in your commitment to him, in your service to him, you give him your best. Or you give him the rest that is left after you have spent all your energy, spent all your time. Okay, friends, I'm asking you, the, I'm asking you, do you give God your very best? Let's even move away from money. Your commitment to him, your service to God. Is it your best? Is, is that, can, you truthfully, can you truthfully say that that's your best? That this way I'm serving God. This is my commitment to God. This is the best I can give God. Is that your best? Your commitment to church is that your best? Because you see, commitment to God is not something in the air. One of the ways you can prove your commitment to God is your commitment to your church. Is your what? Is your commitment to your church? Your commitment to, your, to the people of God, to your church, your local assembly. Your commitment is that your best? Is that your best? Is that the best you can give? Is that the best you can give? So that when God is blessing those who are giving their best, you know, start getting angry. That God, but me too, I gave now. Me too, I sacrificed now. Me too, I did this. Me too, I served you now. I was in usher now. Me too, I did. What is it? Was that your best? Or you only served when it was convenient? Oh, today I'm so tired. Oh. I don't feel like going to church, Jerry. I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't feel like going to church. Ah, it's rainy. I can't go to church. Imagine. Can I ask you a simple question? Imagine a service day. The church doors are locked. And you members who came to church, but you couldn't enter. And there was no service. You now saw me later. Ah, and I said, Pastor, why was there no service? I said, and I said ah. Jay, Jay, you, you, you didn't see rain. It rained now. That's why I didn't come to church. How would you feel? That your pastor said he didn't come to church because it rained. I'm, I'm asking you a, a serious question. I'm being sincere. If I tell you I didn't come to church because it rained, how would you feel? Do you feel I'm normal? You feel that some, this, this pastor has backslidden. That he's not serving God again. Abina, Rachel, this one is a fake pastor. This is not a real pastor. How can pastors say because of rain didn't come to church? But you know many of you don't come to church because of rain. Is that not true? Many of you don't come to church because of rain. So the way you feel, or the way you will, because you can never, I won't let you feel that way. There's no, I will enter the rain. Me, I will enter the rain. Until God gives me a car. I will enter the rain. The way you will feel if I tell you that I didn't come to because it rained is the way God feels. Now look at this idiot child. Rain. Rain is the reason why he didn't go to the church. Oh, damn. I'm not going to say you are a fool. Rain is not the reason. Should I tell you the reason? Your comfort is more important to you than God. Yourself is more important. It's, you don't have honor for God. God is you are, you are not giving God your best. You give God when it's convenient. Ah, the sun is too much. And there's no umbrella. See, the sun is too much. My skin, if I go out in the sun, my skin will be turning into tan, tan, tan. Skin that if one trailer hits you, 
<laughs> you know the way the skin is again. Skin. Pray that fire will not burn that skin. Skin, skin. I'm always skin. If I go out in the sun, it will turn. My skin will turn. I need an umbrella and I can't find my umbrella. Hello, why didn't you come to church, Tinu? Ah, Pastor, I'm so sorry, you see. Whenever I go out in the sun, my skin begins to turn. And I was looking for my umbrella yesterday. I couldn't find it. That's why I didn't come. Or, or by the time I found it, it was already 7 o'clock. And I, I figured, I figured I, was, I was already late. So I couldn't come again. I'm not serious. Or, I, or some of you asked me why I didn't come to church. I told you I, I was washing clothes in the house. <laughs> That there's no clothes to wear to that I was washing clothes. Or, or I was sewing clothes. <laughs> Someone is laughing. She knows herself. God, we have mercy on her. Oh, there are two that are laughing. Thank God there are two. So they will know who I'm talking about. Thank God there are two that are laughing here. They say, I'm sewing clothes. They say, customers, ah, pastor, they work. God is now answering your prayer over, over my life. Oh. The work is now many. Even Sunday serve, I don't have time again. There's no time to come to church. I'm so busy. He said, Satan has given you work. Oh. Not, I'm not praying for you. My prayer for you is that God will show you light, that you will become serious with God. The customer that will come that will make you come to church, it's not me that I pray that kind of customer for you. Satan that is praying for you. And Satan that is answering the prayer. <laughs> Friends, you see, the reason why you don't give God your best is not because, it's not because you can't give God your best. It's because you think of yourself first. Think of the pleasure, you think of your comfort, you think of your convenience. You see, if you are still serving God based on when it's convenient for you, or how convenient it is, you're not serving God. It doesn't cost, it doesn't, it's not coming at a price. Can you run to church, and I see my members drenched in the rain, and people are entering church, and, the, and, and water is coming out of their body because they came to church in the rain. Do you know what joy will fill the heart of God? That look at the passionate people. Can members be running to church and rain? They are running in the rain. Even with the umbrella, rain are still rain. Are, their shoe has entered rain. Do you know? Do you know what God says about you? These people won't know me. His glory will fill your life. But just just small drizzle, it's drizzling. Or could you shoe? It, it, the, 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 what do you call Gojo Shoe in Yoruba? It's about to rain. <laughs> the rain is shooing. The, the, it, 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 it hasn't even started drizzling, no. The cloud is just cloudy. It's cloudy, it's dark. We're like, ah! This rain will be heavy. <laughs> if I go and start going to church, if, if the rain go and meet me on the road, or even if it does not meet me, if, what if the rain go and start in church? <laughs> and when we close, I'm not able to come back home merely. Self, you are greater than God. That's the meaning. You are more important to God than God is. Doesn't cost you anything, friends. What you are giving is it your best? The way you are serving God is it your best? Your commitment to church is that your best? You can't serve God. Based on your convenience. Are you following me? Many of us, if we, were, if we were King David, we would accept the way we are behaving, the way our life is now. Until we allow God to, to intervene. If we were David, you will accept our owner's offer. Because you are a thief. You want to keep your own money. What's the meaning of that? You, pref- you want to preserve your comfort. You will accept, ah, you say, Arona, you are in the spirit. You are, a spirit, you are a spiritual person. You are a great person. You, you know how to honor a king. You are giving it to a king. In fact, let me bless you right now. Let me, let me prophesy to your life. As you have given me, may, may my God give you. You are happy to receive it for free. That's the way some of us are. We don't want anything that will cost us. We don't want to. We don't want anything. Anything that will touch us, that will affect our, our comfort our pleasure, our soul life, our self-life. We don't want God to come there. It doesn't come at a price. Friends, if you are going to follow Jesus, if you are going to serve Jesus, it has to come at a price. What is the price? What is the price you are paying to serve Jesus? 
can you wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning because you want to come to church early? Because you have to prepare your children. And you know they will eat. You have to cook for them. Can, can waking up 4 a.m. on Sunday morning be the price you are paying to be in church early before 8 o'clock? Midweek service, Thursdays. Can closing your shop by 4.30 or 5? Can it be the price you are paying to be in church before 5.30? Sunday evening. Can... This one is not even an issue. That there's a match or there's a movie you want to watch on your phone. So you cannot make evening service. Can, that, can, can you give it up? Can that be the price? Even if, even if... Let's give it to you like that. Can it be the price you are, you are paying? That comfort you want to enjoy. But I'm tired. You know, some people are tired for three months that they can't come to, they can't come to church. They are, tired. they are always tired. May, may you not be tired and go to well and die from your tiredness. How can you be? May you not be bedridden. You are tired. You understand? You are tired, but if there's a party, you can go. It's not tired that's worrying you. It's the value you put on God. No, do you know some people have been tired for three months that they can't come to church? They say they are tired. There's no time. There's no chance. They are busy. But they are, but they are not busy for a party. They are not busy for a cinema. They are not busy for other things. So is, is the problem really busy? Is that they don't value God. They don't want to pay any price. See, work, work is not... Work, any reason you give for not serving the Lord is not the real reason. Do you understand? The reason is that you don't value God. You don't honor Him. I'm telling you the truth. You don't honor him. Friends, your offering to God must come at a price. What is the price of your offering? Can the price can be the price of your offering be that you've told your customers that I cannot work on Sunday because I'm going to church. We have morning service and we have evening service. And the customers say, ah. That Sunday morning, gone gone is when I want to collect my clothes. If you know you cannot sweat, I won't give you. Ah, I say, well, no problem. If you cannot wait, you can take your clothes. Because me, I have to be in church on Sunday morning. Sunday evening, I can't guarantee you that you, are, you, you, you collect it. Because there's still service on Sunday evening. Can losing a customer be the price? <laughs> you are paying. Friends, Anyone who is not ready to pay a price is not ready to follow Jesus. Anyone who is not ready to pay a price is not ready to serve the Lord. Anyone who is not ready to pay a price is not ready to be a Christian. You might be a Christian by mouth. You go to church once in a while. You are not ready to be a Christian. Are you following my friends? Our following of Jesus, following Jesus comes at a price. For it to even become possible at all for us to follow him, he must pay the price. Is that not the truth? Jesus himself paid the price. If you are now going to actively follow him, what do you do also? You pay a price. And he said it in the scriptures. He said, if anyone will come after me, if anyone will be my disciple, let him what? Take up his cross. Deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's a price for following Jesus. You can't follow Jesus if you are not ready to pay the price. And it's easy to pay the price. The interest between you and paying the price is that you love yourself. If you can, if you can stop loving yourself more than God, you'll be able to pay the price. I'm telling you the truth. That's, um, that's the problem. There's no other problem but that you love yourself more than God. That, ah, if I start following God now, are you saying I will stop doing this? Are you saying I will stop being like this? Are you saying I will not? Are you saying, ah, man, I'm not ready. Why are you not ready? I still want to do this. I still want to do this. What does that? You prefer yourself to God. Friends, those days are gone where we have joked with our Christianity. God is looking for a people who will follow him. And following the Lord comes at a price. I follow now, my friends. So your offering must what? Must cost you something. It must come at a price. Let me close. Look at the book of Luke, chapter 21. That poor widow. And we close. Next week, I'll look at another way to give your offering to the Lord. Luke, chapter 21, from verse 1 to 4. Let's read. 
And he looked about Jesus. And he saw, please look at it carefully so you understand. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Are we still together? And he looked up and he saw the rich man. Who did he see? The rich man. And you know I've been trying to, to tell you that it's not really about how much you give. But that what you have given, has it cost you anything? Now look at it. And it's all the rich men casting their gift, that is their offering, into the treasury. Uh huh. Verse 2. And he, he saw also a certain poor widow casting in data two mites. It's like giving two cobble. Huh? She gave two cobble. Oh, yeah, continue. And he said, Can you give me three and four together? And he said, of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow had cast him more than they all. Wow. See how Jesus judges. Can you say your offering must cost you something? Can you say my offering has to cost me something? I have to feel it. It must come from your heart. You must give all your very best. Forget this story. Forget what Jesus Christ said. In your judgment, he said, rich men gave offerings. A widow gave to Kobo. You actually will give more. Don't look at Jesus. Who gave more? Don't lie. Who gave more? The rich man. Right? Huh? Based on your judgment. But in the way Jesus Christ judges. So you understand what it means for your offering to cost you. Jesus Christ said, all of them combined together that this widow has given more than them. He said, all of them, one person came and gave one million, another person gave two million, another person gave ten million, another person gave fifty million, hundred million. He said, if you add everything together, he said, that we don't give two cobble. He said, that we don't give more than them. You understand why? For all these have of their abundance cast unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury has cast in all the living that she had. You will get what? Let me read another translation for you. KJV is not really sure as well. Because you'll be asking, does it now mean I have to be poor to give God an offering before He can accept me? No. So you understand what it means. I'll show you in, in three translations. I'll show you in CV. I'll show you in ERV. And I'll show you in the Passion. CV is contemporary English version. Are you ready now? And it said... I tell you that this poor woman has put in more than all the others. Everyone else gave what they didn't need. Do you understand now? Those rich men, what they give? What they didn't need. They gave one million, but they didn't need it. It's something they can, it's chicken chain. It's what they can do to buy pure water. Do you understand? Everyone else gave what they didn't need. They are millionaires. I, I, I gave this instance last week, last week Sunday. Now imagine, you know there are people who can, who blow 10 million every Friday night, la 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 Friday. Do you know there are people like that? Do you know, do you know there are people like that? La 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 Friday, tell me your pass from Leo. You said? Island. Island club. 10 million, VIP. Table for one or table for two. They blow 10 million naira steady every Friday night. Now, someone who blows them on steady every Friday now, do they feel it? Does it affect their money? And let me tell you, not all of them are money ritual. Some of them is legit money. So don't let your mind deceive you. Are you following? But, I, but your money does not mean you should be stupid. That's why God, that's why God wants to first give you sense before he gives you money. Do you understand? Are we together? Having money does not mean you should be what? You should be stupid. That's why, God, that's why God does not give you money until he has given you sense. And some of you, that's why money is still being delayed. Because you don't have sense yet. Because, you know, do you know some of those people are Christians? Do oh, you know some of them are Christians? Like Christians, not fake, like they are born again. But they are the Christians that, oh, me obey, me obey religion, sorry, I don't really, I'm not Jim Jim. <laughs> you know, some girls. You say the guy you want to marry, is he born again? And you say, Pastor, he's born again, but he's not really, he's not Jim Jim. He's not, he's not really, he's there, but he's not really, he's not the church type, he's not that. You are better married than that is Jim Jim. Now, is that, is that kind of guy 
He's a Christian. He's even a worker in some churches. Not this church. He cannot be a worker in, in this kind of church. <laughs> Are you following me? He, he's a worker in some churches. Do you understand? He pays tight and offering. But well, left Friday. That kind of Christian, he goes there. He blows 10 million. Be hearing me. Are you with me? Someone who blows 10 million era every Friday night. That's like 40 million era in a week or 50 million era. Depend, in a month. Depending on the numbers of weeks. 40 or 50 million. Right? They're not giving an offering in church. <laughs> Are you following me? The person now came out. Or they now say, the church wants to buy a new keyboard and the keyboard is 5 million era. Who will give, who will give an offering to this cost? Tinu came out. Tinu gave her 5K from what she has. But that person came out and gave 2 million. That I'm going to give 2 million. Now, in the eyes of everybody, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you know you don't, you don't really know the person's life. You don't know his worth. The person now gave out and gave 2 million. In your eyes, what has he given? What is your Barbara? He has given so much. Oh, wow, this man must really love God. Is that not true? But you know that gave five k out of her six k, all the six k she had. Let's say she doesn't have enough faith to give everything. <laughs> I pray that she will have faith to give all the six k. But let's say she doesn't even have faith because she, because she can be going now. So Tino says this this six k is all I have, but I'll give five k out of it. Now. The person that gave 2 million and Tino that gave her 5k out of 6k. You know you don't know how much Tino has. You just know that she says she's giving 5k. You don't know how much the other person you just know that is giving 2 million. Who has given more? The pastor feels like the pastor that does not have sense that, cannot even, that doesn't even know what God is doing. He feels like pushing Tino away. And he feels like pouring all the anointing on that man that gave 2 million. Are you following me? The whole church is like May God bless this man. This man has given so much to our church. Do you understand? The whole church wants to pray for that man. Are you following me? But don't forget, this is a man that blows 10 million naira every Friday in the club. Now he has given an offering of 2 million. That 2 million naira, does he feel it? Does it mean anything to him? So all that 10 million naira every Friday does not mean something to him. Does 2 million naira mean something to him? Are you following me now, my friends? It doesn't cost him anything, right? He doesn't feel it. He doesn't touch his heart. It's not his best. I follow him now, my friend. Do you know that I gave 5,000 era? Plus 6,000 era. She has given what? Her best. No, you have not, not given all. It's not all. The all is 6,000. You only gave 5,000. You gave out of it. You gave your best. You have given your best, right? I follow him now, my friends. Because it costs her a lot. Are you following me? So you can be sharing the fact that it's not the amount, but the amount I give, what does it cost you? So you just can say, this woman has given two cobble. Other people have given 10 million, 100 million, 1 million, 500 million. But this is a lie. This woman has given more. Because they gave what they didn't need. Are you following me? Are you following me? That 2 million that that guy gave in church, are you with me? It's not, it's not enough for boat crews. On Saturday when he wants to go for boat crews, because it's, it's, going to, it's going to carry some girls that will go on the cruise with him. It's not enough for boat crews. Are you following me? It doesn't cost him anything. Are you following me, my friends? But this woman has given two cover. But what does she give? What? Now, don't forget, what those people gave is what? What they didn't need. Are you following me? A portion, what they didn't need. It doesn't cost them anything. It doesn't touch their heart. It's not sacrificial. It's nothing. They don't, they don't feel it. But what did this woman give? She had given all she had to live on. Hi. Can you understand? She had given all her lively wood. I explained to you last week. It does not mean that what she had at that moment, oh. You know, you know some people tell you that, la ye la ti long, five naira, you know what I mean? People will even say that, they see as someone they can call, 
people were by you. <laughs> Think of by you. They have one Uncle Sam. They, Uncle Sam, eh? What you worry, do? What you worry? The man is saying thank you. You understand? That's true, right? How many of you have ever woken up here in your life? And on the night, on the night, morning, you for throughout that year that there's no other way no, there's nothing you can think of there's no uncle to call no auntie no daddy no business no money you're expecting the only night is all the money with you for this rest of your life no no nobody here um, man, i know there's nobody here there's nobody here like that have you, do you have you had that experience before may god know that you have that experience i want to explain the meaning of this livelihood that she has given all she had to live on so that you don't mis- misunderstand it it doesn't mean that she had 100 naira that day. She now gave it. And the next day, she's hoping that her tower will pay her 2,000 naira. She's hoping that Mama Tadjodin will pay her 500. Now, when she calls Brosoji, he will send her 2K. No. She gave all she had to live on. You know the meaning? No, no hope. Again. This was all our hope in life was this morning. I mean in life. Not for that week. Not for that day. Not for that month. Not for that year. In life. That's been all she had to live on. All her livelihood. All her hope. No uncle to call. No auntie to call. She's not hoping that her investment in Bitcoin will rise. That she will collect, that she will cash out next week. She's not hoping. She gave all she, all her hope. Are, are you following me? All she had to live on. Friends, you know the meaning of this? Our offering to God cost, you, cost her a life. Are you following me? Because if you give all you have to live on, it means there's nothing else you have to live on. Oh, the next thing I'm going to show you, not today, next week, you have to give your offering by faith. This man gave her offering by faith. I'll show you next week. That's another way to give your offering. She gave all she had to live on. You see, when you give all you have to live on, what's the next thing you have to live on? On God. That's the remedy of on God. Can you say on God? Many of you say on God, but it's a lie. It's not on God. Many of you say on God, but it's a lie. It's on my account. You have many accounts. On my Pampe. When you say on God, you have looked at Pampe, there's still 5K there. <laughs> when you look at, when you say on God, there's OP, there's still 1K there. On God, you have looked at Pocket App, there's 3K there. On God, you hope that Ranti will, see, will come and collect her clothes tomorrow. <laughs> that she come and collect her clothes tomorrow. And she'll pay you your money. That's not, that's not, that's not on God though. On God, it's not on God. This woman is the real on God. She gave all she had to live on. This is real faith. No, don't let me go to faith yet. It's next week. Are you following me? She gave all she had to live on. That means the only thing she cannot live on is what? On God. God. Can you say on God? Don't say on God again if you have not, if you have not given all you have to live on. If you have not attempted your account, you have, you have, don't be saying to your friends that on God is on God. It's a lie. You plan to call Uncle, Uncle Namdi. <laughs> it's not on God. This woman did not plan to call anybody. Nobody to call. Nobody. It's either God showed up for her or she died. Do you understand? She dies. She dies. She starves. She starves to death. It's either of the two. It's either God shows up or, or what? She dies of starvation. Why? She has given all she had to live on. What an offering. Can you say what an offering? What an offering. It costs her everything. An offering costs her. Are you following me? Our offering is from, came from her heart. She felt it. Our offering touched her heart. Did, did, you think, did, did you think this woman felt her offering? Do you think she felt her offering or not? She felt the giving. She felt it. She gave God her very best. Are you following my friends? This is the only way place there. This is the only account of this woman we have in the Bible. But I believe in my mind that, that, that this woman was blessed afterwards. I believe she, I believe she, she became prosperous. I, believe, I just think so. Looking at the principle of scriptures. They didn't tell us what happened to her. They didn't tell us her life after but I believe, I believe this man did not die poor. I believe her life turned around. Because you can't give to God this way. Friends, can you hear me? You can't give to God this way and it doesn't show up. 
Friends, try it. You can even try it today. You can empty your account. Send the church account. Say, God, pastor has taught to us that we should give what cost us. God, I'm trying to, you know I'm not yet there yet, but I'm trying to come there. I'm not going to empty my account yet though, but I'll give you 70% of what is my account. <laughs> Friends, God shows up for those who are annoying. And you're not going with your offering when it costs you something. So if you are going to give God an offering and you want it to really be honoring to God and you want God to accept it, your offering has to cost you something. Your offering has to come at a price. Do you know the price at which Jesus' offering came? Who, who can tell me the price? The price of a life. A life. It came at that price. That was the price. It came at the price of our life. At the price of our sustenance. At the price of our continuity in this world. Friends, I'm asking you again. At what price does your offering come? And don't forget, how much did she give? Two cobble. Do you understand? Do you understand that it's not about how much you give? But that how much you have given, at what price has it come? So, other than what I have to give, has it come at a price? Friends, the offering that is honoring to God, the offering that touches the heart of God, the offering that God accepts, the offering that shows that you honor God is that which costs you something. Is that which comes at a price. Is that which touches your heart. Is that which you feel. Is that which is your very best. So I've showed you two ways on how to give God an offering. Last week, I said your offering must be thoughtful, planned, and worthwhile. Today, I said what? Your offering has to cost you something. Your offering has to touch your heart. You have to feel your offering. You have to give God your very best. Your offering must come at a price. Can you begin to talk to the Lord? If you need to repent, repent. Some of you know you have given God, a, God an offering as a beggar before. You just dash him something. Just God, Olam. Can you repent before God? Can you ask for help? You know, the, the, the root of all this is just honor for God. That God put your honor in my heart. When you honor God, you honor with your offering, and these are the, this will be the this will be the characteristics of your offerings to God. Everything starts from the heart. That God put your honor in my heart. Help me to honor you, my God. Put your honor in my heart. Let me prefer you above all else. Let me prefer you above all else. Let you alone be the priority of my heart. Help me to honor you, my Lord. I want to honor you. I want to live for your honor. I want to make you my priority. Oh, Jesus, help me to honor you. Put your honor in my heart, my Jesus. Oh, put your honor in my heart, my Jesus. Put your honor in my heart, my Jesus. I want to please you. I want to honor you with my offering. Dear Lord, put your honor in my heart. Pray and talk to God. Pray and talk to God.